Welcome back to Real Drunk here on Space Castle, where we create a drinking game for a movie. We perform that drinking game to our misery and your amusement, and then we attempt to review that movie after we've been drinking for 90 minutes or more. My name is DT. And I'm Seth. <laughs> I don't know how to present this one. This movie is an experience. Yeah. One of the main actor's brothers told them they shouldn't, basically begged them not to do this movie, said it would ruin his career. Mm-hmm. He kind of did. Yeah, kind of. I, I, I kind of felt like begging Seth to not do this movie for real drunk because I feel like it might ruin our drinking careers. <laughs> it might. <laughs> it might ruin our livers, but that's it's perfect for this show. Uh, it's Biodome starring Pauly Shore and Stephen Baldwin. It came out in 1996, I believe. Also stars William Atherton, Kylie Minogue, a bunch of other people. Honestly, the most famous person or location in this thing is probably the the Donald C. Tillman water reclamation plant in California. Yeah. And it's also the probably the only thing, person, place, or thing whose career wasn't utterly fucking tarnished by being in this movie. There is another one, but we'll get into that later. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. That's it. The, yeah, this movie is not going to be fun. I will say this. <laughs> while this movie is not going to be fun, it is not going to be as bad as The Happening. So... We got that going for us. Which is nice. Oh, we hope you enjoy this. <laughs> this is going to be painful, folks. It really is. So, But this is why we do it. We put ourselves in the line. We poison our bodies and yeah. destroy our minds for your entertainment. Speaking of which, I'm drinking Kilomen Sineg today because I need something to lift my spirits during this movie. I see what you did there. I am still stuck on this Jack Daniels Bonded, which is still pretty good. I still like it. It's great. It's pretty tasty. The more I drink, the better it tastes. And that's not an indictment of it. It is actually a pretty tasty whiskey. But the more I drink, um, the more enjoyable it becomes. And I wish I could say the same about this movie, but it's probably not entirely true. Should we just get right to the rules? Yes. I'm prolonging this because sniffing this whiskey before we get into the movie is going to be the best part of this whole thing honestly i feel like i should be huffing paint or something before we start this movie i need a jar of fucking rubber cement i might advise against that (laughs) as always we've got 10 rules for this drinking game the 10th of which is a wild card seth's got it this time when that wild card pops up we both have to finish our drinks no matter how full they are no matter how miserable we're feeling we've got to commit we've got to do it those drinks have to be empty if you don't, you're kicked off the show forever and excommunicated from the Space Castle family. True. Remember Josh? Didn't make the cut. Sorry, Josh. Excommunicated? Not in it. That's why you guys never heard of him. Mm-mm. Not even sorry. Here are the other nine rules for Biodome from 1996. Number one, Pauly Shore-isms. Uh, if you grew up in the 90s, you're very familiar with the body of work done by one Pauly Shore. I was going to try and make up something funny. Pauly Horatio Shore. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go that's good uh he has a very unique style of performing and saying things and trying to drudge laughs out of his audience he does quite a bit of those sort of mannerisms in this movie every time he does one maybe just maybe it'll get slightly funnier each time i don't know it won't number two fake arizona locations so this movie uh takes place in the town or thereabouts of tucson arizona which is an actual place. Uh, it doesn't look anything like it's, it's portrayed in the movie here, but there's a lot of locations, a lot of geographical locations that are mentioned early on in this movie and throughout the course of this movie that don't fucking exist because I don't know. I honestly don't even know why they decided to, to have this set in Arizona. Me they could have said California easily yeah. because it's all filmed in fucking California anyway. Yeah. The deserts aren't even Arizona. They're full of like Joshua trees and stuff. It's like, this is why even bother? Number three, sexual harassment in pickup lines or just unwanted advances in general. This was the early to mid-90s where sexual harassment and giving women a hard time was still considered funny for some fucking reason. No idea why. There are a lot of really awkward instances of the two main characters, Bud and Doyle, trying to hit on women, trying to harass women and so forth. Uh, Let's go ahead and throw out a trigger warning. If you're a woman who's experienced something like this, please be aware that this movie deals with this in a very not sensitive way. And we're going to drink every time it happens because we need to numb the pain i want to point out that like this rule is not for a celebration of like yeah let's drink to it it's like no yeah it's bad 
it it's bad yeah we're not glorifying this shit at all nope we are however glorifying drinking yep try it out kids <laughs> number four doyle as played by stephen baldwin runs into something the writers and director of this movie thought it was really funny to have doyle just run into doors and walls and stuff okay Back when being gross and slapstick in like the dumbest way was still like funny. Number five, scientific things are said incorrectly. Our two main characters are complete dumb fucks, aggressively so, and they spend a whole lot of time in a scientific setting surrounded by scientists, and they say a lot of dumb shit. Uh, number six, Doyle and Bud get forgiven. Again, these are two aggressively fucking dumb characters who do a lot of heinous and horrible and awful shit. And at every single turn, all the other characters in this cast immediately forgive them and they get to start from square one when the scene ends. It's like being a, a Republican candidate in Kentucky. <laughs> Got him. Number seven, we have Faulkner close-ups. So Faulkner is a head scientist who runs the Biodome. He is played by the legendary William Atherton, who is also in Ghostbusters. <laughs> and he has a lot of moments where the camera just goes right up in the, the, the glorious red beard of his. Seth, you can relate. I can relate to the second part. I don't really have <laughs> close-ups. This is about as close as I get for the good of all mankind. Number eight, something priceless gets completely ruined. And that can be psychologically. It could be physically. It can be a person. It could be a place. It could be a thing. Bud and Doyle go through an absolute goddamn fucking rampage in this movie. And they ruin a whole lot of things. Completely irreplaceable things. <laughs> Number nine, somebody says scientists. As we said before, this movie takes place in a scientific lab. There are a lot of scientists around. A lot of people refer to themselves and everybody else as scientists. The word scientist is just thrown around all fucking willy-nilly. Every time somebody says scientist, we're going to perform our own little science experiment and see what happens to our livers and kidneys afterwards. And like I said before, number 10 is the wild card. Seth will call that out. When he does so, we have to finish our drinks no matter how full they are. No matter how fucking miserable we are watching the movie up to this point, it's going to fucking happen and we got to power through the rest of the movie after the fact as well. I'm as ready as I'll ever be, honestly, I think. Probably not. Fuck it, let's go. Into the longest fucking opening credit sequence known to man. I'm, f I'm frankly astonished. It was this weird thing in the, in the early to mid 90s where your opening credits for some reason had to essentially be an entire fucking music video where it was the full length of the song you chose. Mallrats did the exact same thing where it's like that full fucking song by Squirt Gun and the credits just go fucking on and on and on forever. It's literally like three fucking minutes. Yeah. It's frankly absurd and I'm glad that that trend has kind of died. You got William Atherton, who is a legend, who is in fucking Ghostbusters, held his own against, like, Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray and Harold Ramis, and he doesn't get the and credit in this movie? Kylie Minogue does? Really? Yeah. We are now one-third of the way through the opening credits. The place is the Arizona desert. Here, no, a team not. of scientists... Welcome to Biodome. Congratulations, Biodome Five and Good Luck. Drink right now, on your the, steady the shoulders opening, rest the hopes and dreams of the title of this movie, and, and I will not be drinking the very the title survival of, this of the human race. They say it like seventy-five fucking times. It's brutal. You're the peasant. Holy shoreism. Okay, you ready? <laughs> Something runs in your head. Back. Fuck it. How did those two guys land those two what? girls? Like, that doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Like, they're Look at disgusting. It's free. Is that a Polly Shoreism? Absolutely. Cool. You can tell that Polly Shore, even Polly Shore, is like borderline breaking character in every scene. This isn't a contest, Monique. Like, you can tell the shit that he says, he's like, I can't believe I'm saying this. Damn it. <laughs> The one with the corn. Mmm, <laughs> you like it. Good one. Holy shoreism. <laughs> yeah. All right. We met these guys from Arizona Tech, and they're taking Arizona us Tech's out to the Arizona Tech's not a thing. Nope, not at all. You met men? Yeah, baskets like. 
with the swimmers, okay? Vasquez Lake is not Vasquez a fucking lake. lake in Arizona. Come on, guys, we're coming. Whatever, bud. Riddle me this. Why do they have a surfboard you know, if they live in Tucson? I was thinking the exact same fucking thing. Strokers. It's because they actually live in California and they just they changed the words in the script. Where did they get firecrackers? Can you believe those Why do they have firecrackers? I mean, it's not like we're not in the saving the environment. All I know is I'm not Something priceless gets ruined? Yep. <laughs> Think that means it goes both ways? I don't know, but we do. Tourism for sure. Mm, yeah. Um, I um, I don't think there's a keg at Vasquez Lake. Store. Vasquez Lake doesn't fucking exist. Vasquez Lake. Vasquez, Vasquez Lake doesn't fucking exist. Yes, I did. Do I? Wish this movie didn't fucking exist. Kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of that particular type in this movie. I got to piss. Many years of hey, look, they have an Arizona State search. flag. I'm actually surprised to see that. <laughs> Our dream there, of course, is the is Donald C. Tillman Water Reclamation Plant. It's in Van Nuys, California. It has been Starfleet Academy and Star Trek. It has been part of the Utopia Society and Bill and Ted. It's been in like 30 fucking movies and TV shows. Yeah. It's a cool facility. Yeah, it's still looking. Back off, punks. Star, no, star! We have Why are you just Nazi salute? Dude, I don't know. Go also, this is like a really go? weird interaction yeah, in general. Girls want to get physical. <laughs> this movie is wild, dude. Ladies and gentlemen, surprise, surprise. Why am I drinking? I do not need we to drink are. extra. Please <laughs> announce the arrival. We have work to do. Work to do. Work to do. Excuse me, miss. Are you tired? I beg your pardon? Are you tired? No, why? Because you've been running through my mind all day. There it is. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. If you were yogurt, would you be fruit at the bottom or stirred? What does that mean? Is he would oh, my God. Fix it. Did it hurt? Did what hurt? When you fell from heaven, did it hurt? <laughs> <laughs> Bud Doyle! You know the kind of magic fingers? Yeah, like the ones at the mall. You know, that the big toys always lying for free. They sit Fuck. there and they just plop down. Why are you drinking? This movie just makes me want to drink, dude. <laughs> Daddy, look at the little thing! Just... Hey, have you ever been with the squirrel on the stub? <laughs> <laughs> Unwanted advances. <laughs> Absolutely. Choo, the pillow! For the blanket. I think these are polyisms. Okay. Here we go. A gross roller coaster. Nothing like a good 90s movie with some sexual abuse in it. It's fucking despicable. Yeah, I can't even watch it. Simeon. Dick. <laughs> That's it. That's the the time I legitimately laughed last time. It's not open now. Of course it won't open. That door's not even sealed or weather stripped. No, you can see light coming in from the bottom. Take a Sherman tank to open that door. No, it would not. Oil runs into something. Yep. There it is. Hey, what are you doing? Wanted sexual advance. No. Nature is about miracles, but Car is a miracle. Why would she do this? And you're a miracle know. too. Was that an unwanted sexual advantage or like I don't yeah. know, dude. That's that's so weird sexual harassment thing from Petra, right? <laughs> you're sciatic? Ben, Sad because you get ass. Yeah. <laughs> Just, just right where the uh, director's head was, too. I'm proud of you. Bud and Doyle are forgiven? So I guess this Absolutely, is for some reason. I guess. I just don't like it. Polysorism? Yeah. Unfortunately. That is the most polyshore thing I've ever heard. Peanut butter 
butter and jelly with bacon. That's easy. Oh, buddy, it's a call, man. Keep on cruising. Keep yep. on with you. Keep on going. Keep on going down the line. This is a Baldwin. This Jewish is a movie. Dress. People <laughs> edited this. Dude, that was fully made. Set designed this. That was a costume nuts. designer that put oh, that on buddy. out. Keep on cruising. Mm. Come on, buddy. Assholes. If I were you, Moan. This was before digital photography. How did they get the film canister out of the biodome to, for that picture? It's frightening how much you want me. Gross. Sexual harassment. That, that is your mother's boyfriend? Stop it, that is I'm trying to come on to you? How did Polly Shore have such a varied career where he did stuff like Son-in-Law, which is pretty okay. Son-in-Law's pretty and good. And Encino, man. That's actually really fucking great. And this. I think this is like his break period where he seats. had a mental break. And I know you're taking it. Did he have one? Illegal. I don't know. Is its rapid rate of photosynthesis? Scientific thing said wrong? More oxygen for everyone. Thunderbird Junior College. Nothing to be ashamed of. Mm. Not an actual location in Arizona. Uh, nope, it is. Really? Yep. It's a three day blowout. In Arizona? Well, she just said Arizona Tech, so we're going to drink anyway, motherfucker. Seminars and lectures and yeah, you think they had the budget to, to redo the signs? No. Why not, pray tell? Did Bernard and Doyle ring a bell? Nice. Dude, this this scene actually makes me upset. May I help you? It's what so like mean spirited, well, you know? Yeah. That's just unnecessarily pull everything off the shelves and How do you not notice, Farmulus? Giant flat paper. paper. I think we got all the priceless stuff gets but there's still destroyed. a couple of loose right there flapping like this. And there's apparently like a fucking owl in here. Runs into something. Oh, runs into something. Oh, gotta get out of here. Just dump them all over the floor. Where did they get these? Why are these here? So many questions that I'll never get answers to. None of that is sustainable. None of the packaging fits in with the idea of the biodome. Polysorism. Oh, did they bring? They didn't bring a dentist or a physician into the biodome. Nope. No medical a staff. Psychologist to make sure nobody goes fucking crazy living in there for a year. Nope. Didn't bother. Me neither. You. I have a head cannon. For this movie? Yeah, I have a head cannon that Mr. Baldwin only decided to do this movie on the contingent that this was real nitrous oxide, and he got to really get fucked up. He read the script and he's like, I'll do it on one condition. Also, I don't know if you noticed this, but in the last couple of like scenes, Polly Shore's hair has gotten much redder. Yeah. It's starting to look like fucking Ben Affleck and terrible. <laughs> Banish him to the desert, the even desert? though it's like oh, 200 feet from anything Not else. It is life on a taut tensile line, but the desert is an integral part of nature. Unbelievable. See, but here's the thing, so this Faulkner. Is be. Vamos, just this is a here. closely go your thing, like go, go, go our thing. Yeah. constructed the scientific research facility. Here, so the lizards or whatever are that they're gonna eat like even wanna hang are apparently anyways, supposed to be part of your scientific endeavors, go and you're just like, dome. nah, fuck it. One with just the fuck dome off this whole biodome. So don't come knocking on our door. Do you understand? Also, all like, two the desert yeah. would be so hotter than anything us, else in the biodome. Well, it's you know, all the same girls are ecosystem and air. Yeah. And how would you keep the lizards and the bugs and shit in the desert part from not just climbing up that wall and getting into the rainforest part and just fucking... This is why it doesn't anyway. work, man. Look, they can't share an atmosphere. Uh, period. Because you're not going to get rain in the rainforest part and not in the desert part. Yeah. Just... It's just science. I hate, I hate it, man. It's just poorly thought out. You know, 
I, I heard a rumor once that this movie was actually supposed to be like an actual like serious movie about surviving in a biodome. Mm-hmm. And then at some point or another, it was decided it was going to be a comedy, and nobody wanted to give a shit anymore, and they just slapdashed this scene together. This movie sucks. It was fucking terrible. Want to talk about something else? Yeah. Want to talk about Space Castle VR? I'm thinking a lot about it. Yeah, man. How's how's that going? It's good, dude. I'm really looking forward to it. Like I said, you saw me do some some, uh, prototyping concept art last night during family night, so there's that. That was fun. I'm going to do a whole bunch more now that I've kind of got that system working out. It's good. It's a good system. It's a good, it's going to be a good game if I can make it. Cool. How's your family? Everybody's doing good? Yeah. My sister's pregnant. I don't know if I told you. Yeah, you did. That's awesome. Yeah. She's due, uh, I think in January. That's awesome, man. That's going to come up super quick. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Where did they set down roots? Because they were traveling around the country for a little while, right? They owned a condo in Phoenix, in central Phoenix, and then decided to rent it out and travel the country. And now they're just back there, um, right cool. by the, the VA Phoenix. hospital, if you know what that is. Yeah, I do, actually. Um, thinking about selling it, getting a house. You know? Cool, man. Yeah. They're doing good. That's right. They had like genetic testing and all that. It's going to be a girl. And they're nice. Everything seems to be totally A OK, which is really nice. Like, it's all, it's all golden, man. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, right. it's exciting. Yeah, very cool, man. Yeah. Is this movie over yet? Nope. Close up, though. Also, Faulkner's got some real Nazi ideologies coming out right now. Mm. How'd you get a job? Fucking President Clinton. You had sex with President Clinton? That's pretty really cool. <laughs> That's so, actually kind of funny. Like, yeah, not a bad joke. I gotta be real. Other, they picked up two guys at Arizona Tech. <laughs> Arizona Tech. Arizona Tech. Oh, fucking school. You, Although, is question? University of Arizona really a real know, school either? Oh, shit. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the same thing about ASU with you, though, so. Yeah. The Facts Club, baby. <laughs> Dude, that is some fucking deep discounts for the members versus non-members of the Facts Club. It's like a 300% savings. <laughs> like, no joke. Nice green grass lawn at a college in Arizona? Yeah, maybe they film this in January. Okay. There it is. Down your shit. Wild card, bitch. Knew it. The best the part of this whole D. movie. This is the entire reason I chose this movie. Look at those glorious bastards. Fuck. Tenacious D, y'all. The motherfucker, yeah. Thanks for the background. Yep. Oh, God. Yep. Oh. It makes you feel better. I forgot about it too. Clearly, because that was mid sentence when that happened. <laughs> this is definitely something priceless getting destroyed. Forever. Absolutely, they destroyed the whole project. The guy said he had 100 million in this thing. So the whiskey from the wild card has still not made its way all the way down to my stomach. <laughs> Sorry, friend. You should have known it was Tenacious D. Like, I come knew on. it was going to be Tenacious D. I knew it. Oh, my. The oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Stop this. Stop what? Just please stop this. this bud. Just stop all of it. Stop Just the movie, stop. please. Stop all of it, bud. Stop all of it. Close up. Yep. You never think about yeah. Anything. Got him. Yeah. Fuck. Wait, God, what a stop. fucking burn. Definitely don't forgive them in two we scenes. We made Vasquez Lake. Not a real place, it. Doyle. Got I hate this movie. Where are you guys headed? You have any idea how hard it would be to swallow that key? Really difficult. Almost as difficult as it was to swallow that wild card earlier. Dick! Oh my god. Got him. Close up of William Atherton. Yeah, there it is. Gross. Gross. I can't believe they just show a clown getting murdered on live TV. <laughs> I can't believe the lady's smiling while it's happening. 
It looks like William. I was gonna. I was gonna. I was gonna say William H. Now Macy. Really no. <laughs> John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> William H. Macy is choice, dude. That's excellent. <laughs> Fuck me. See, look, they have to be some kind of weird popular because they, there's crowds of people loving them. Like, they, Well, no, it's because they're making messes and being dickheads on TV. Like, we know from experience through our entire lives that if you make mess and you act like a dick on TV, people will love you. It's true. That's why we're doing this on, on YouTube. It's why we started a YouTube channel where we drink alcohol and make fun of dumb movies. <laughs> I feel like we've missed like 75 instances of somebody saying the word scientist. I'm actually kind of okay with it. Here, a team of scientists, highly qualified scientists, special scientists. What do you think? You're some rocket scientist? Yeah, maybe. I hope all the needle drops in this make it so that YouTube rejects the video and we don't put it online. <laughs> <laughs> like I will say one thing. We need to bring back 90s fashion. Bud and Doyle refuse to speak to anyone. I think you should come to Seattle, friend. So when are you guys Why do they forgive them again? Don't know. Drinking. Guys so mad at us. I think all four of these people are equally stupid. For having done this movie? Or the characters? No, the characters. Oh, yeah. We're definitely getting copyright stricken for this. Yeah. Probably just have to. I'll just turn the sound down way low. We'll just cut. talk incessantly cut. over it. Just cut the whole thing out. You know what? Yeah. Let's just cut the whole movie out. Fuck this whole thing. I hate this movie. Up along, correct? Where did that Where guy, did that come, guy from? come from? Oh, the shore is. Yeah. Nice. The cinematography of this movie was like, I'm going to get one fucking artistic shot in this entire fucking project. And it's going to be the shot of the lake and fucking Polly Shore dancing up above and it's going to just, just be the reflection. It's going to be my, my fucking calling card for this whole fucking movie. <laughs> Do you think it's really Faulkner? Whoever was in this William closet, Faulkner? Huh? Well, I'm going to talk to him and tell him we're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should Son of a bitch. Involved, you know? we could use that was a literary now, joke. That's a very good idea. I still dream. Maybe it is William Faulkner. <laughs> this is the entire reason I decided to keep the rule of Bud and Doyle destroying something irreplaceable because they clearly destroyed this poor human mind. I'm drinking. Yep. Now's a good time as any, I guess. I'm going to count that as Doyle running into something. I think something priceless just got ruined, and I think it was Seth's spirit. <laughs> Do you think they did test ratings for this movie? No! Dude, this movie ha Okay. Thank you for the review, Seth. Do you have an internet show to make? There's only 10 minutes left. You know how I often say I have a strong sense of nostalgia for the 90s? Yeah, this is not included. This movie is single-handedly, like, wrecking that one scene at a time. <laughs> Polishorism. Yeah. Okay. I like how you can just see the two stuntmen's faces there. And he's wearing the worst fucking red dyed wig ever. Yeah, didn't even try. worse than Polishore's actual hair in this movie. I think Mother Nature's calling me again right now, squirrel. Can you cork it? Negatory! There's no place to go out here. Hey, what about that factory? I don't think so. Though. Go anywhere! Okay, we're celebrities. <laughs> really just pull the car over. <laughs> William Atherton, you're better than this. Did he stouse? I don't know who you are, but you're better than this. Brian Hayes Curie? Probably better than this. Tenacious D! <laughs> Definitely better than this. Absolutely. Um, I'm stopping this piece of shit. Yep. Anything you want to say before we move into the review section of this episode of Real Drunk? 
Let's fucking do it. I wanna get this shit done. And now we're in the review. This movie sucked. It's but, terrible. It's fucking awful. But it wasn't as bad as The Happening. Uh, I don't know, man. They're kind of neck and neck for me, honestly. This movie sucks for a lot of reasons. However, The Happening is a fully serious movie. This one is not. I think there's a level of seriousness required when you're trying to make legitimately funny comedy. And this movie doesn't even attempt to beat that. It's just they're literally throwing everything and just seeing what sticks to the giant strip of flypaper they've strung up against the wall. <laughs> there's a responsibility and a level of effort required to make a decent comedy. And this movie doesn't aspire to that at all. It doesn't even it's not try. even trying to be a good comedy. No. Yeah. This movie is just a failure on every fucking front. Did you have any affinity for this movie when it came out in 1996 when you saw it as a kid? When I first saw it, which wasn't in 1996, but it was probably somewhere near that, I liked it. In my memory, before this movie, before Real Drunk, I liked this movie. I was like, oh, Biodoom is terrible. I, I knew that in my head. But I was like, it's terrible, but I seem to remember enjoying it. I do not know why I thought that. This movie, let me see. I think this movie only has three redeemable qualities. And each of them are specific events that happen within this movie. Would you like me to list them for you? Sure. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> this movie is an absolute fucking horrible dystopian wasteland where the world is flooded and there's lightning and thunder and everybody's dying horrible deaths and tenacious d is one small ray of sunshine poking through the clouds and shining down on the world below the first time i saw this movie i was 13 years old i was at a sleepover at my best friend's house okay and we watched a whole bunch of dumb movies i think happy gilmore came out the same year and i think we rented biodome and happy gilmore I remember all of us, even at the age of 13, just kind of made our way through biodomes. Like, oh, <laughs> I think the hardest any of us laughed was the fucking, the soldiers going hut, 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 hut for no reason. We're just <laughs> dumb kids. We're, it was stupid. like three o'clock in the morning. We were deliriously fucking tired and we found that hilarious. Then we watched Happy Gilmore the next day. There's a lot of really weird, strange similarities with Happy Gilmore. Not necessarily like the story being told or anything like that, but just the feel of movies that came out in this, this time period. Where like everything had to have like a fucking needle drop for some like contemporary pop song or like weirdly like a classic rock song. Like Happy Gilmore's got like like uh fucking Leonard Skinner and shit like that. This movie's got like Steve Miller band and some other weird like fucking men at work safety dance. Just bizarre fucking music choices. But I remember laughing hysterically through Happy Gilmore and stopping the movie and we'd rewind and play the funny parts over and over again, and we just had an absolute ball with that. Whereas this movie is just an absolute fucking slog wasteland of no humor whatsoever. Very, very little humor to speak of. Happy Gilmore is a good movie. Relatively. Comparatively, I should say. Yeah. Yeah, this is not a good... This has no redeeming qualities, man. Yeah, I honestly, I don't really know much... much I'm... Fuck. A fucking wild card. <laughs> fuck. I got myself with the fucking Mario Brothers one last time with the fucking Brothers and Colors when they put the jumpsuits on because I forgot where in, in that movie it was because I, I was already pretty buzzed. And you just dropped, I, I think I actually swallowed like two and a half ounces of whiskey off that fucking wild card with Tenacious D. Yeah, I had and at I, least an ounce and a half. Fucking hurt. And I'm, f fuck. Yeah. Oh, I forgot where I was going with this. I forgot what I was going to say. I don't have a lot to say about this movie, honestly. I wish this episode was funnier. I wish I had more funny, insightful things to say. This movie gives us nothing. Like, there is nothing to work off of with this fucking movie. Okay, here's the thing I want to explore with you, man. Now that we're both a little bit drunk and this movie is finished. Are I we going to get personal? Maybe. Oh, you want to talk about the movie? Oh, okay. Never I want right. to explore why this movie being so shitty is so well known how does everybody know this movie i don't know it's shitty this should have been a movie that came out and was forgotten but everybody knows it why i don't know man how I did the moral i of this 
Go ahead. Go ahead. What's the moral? I think the moral of the story is unless you're a producer and a director on a modern Western film, you should always listen to Alec Baldwin. <laughs> Look, 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 look. Stephen Baldwin. Yeah. Hot take. Shockingly. Deserved better than this movie. Well, I mean, the motherfucker did the usual suspects a year prior. He was becoming a known quantity. His star was slightly on the rise. And he was like, I think I'm going to do fucking Biodome with Polly Shore, directed by somebody who's never fucked directed a movie before. That's the thing. I want to know. Give me your theories. Okay. Why do you think he did this? I have no fucking clue. Did Polly Shore have some dirt on him? I don't think so. They seem to get along pretty well in this movie. They, I mean, oddly enough, they have decent chemistry. They have pretty good chemistry. Like, not even decent, like, pretty good. Uh, did the studio offer him a fuck ton of money? I doubt that, because the whole budget for the movie was like $13 million. Do you think they blew most of that on Stephen Baldwin? No, because Kylie Minogue got the and credit. So I think okay. they're probably boom most of the, the casting budget on Kylie Minogue. Okay. Oddly. Maybe he knew Tenacious D was in it, and he was hoping he was going to be able to meet Tenacious D, but then they weren't even in the same scenes together. Why was Tenacious D in this? How did that happen? I think they probably just agreed to be in everything at that point. They just popped up in random shit. Yeah. Jack Black was in Demolition Man, but you could only see like half his face in like 30 seconds of, of screen time. All kinds of weird shit. They were just trying to get into the, the whole Hollywood. What? Thing. Yeah. Yeah, Jack, yeah, Jack Black is in Demolition Man. I did not know that. If you had to give this movie a rating, one out of ten, what would you give it? This is tough. I two. think. It's a two. I think I'm gonna give it a three. For, and I'll justify. Let me justify. Tenacious D shows up. <laughs> literally always brings it up a point for me at least. No matter so what. By, def by default, it's a two, but Tenacious D, give it a one bonus point. It's a minimum plus one for Tenacious D. Okay. And I think there are three good jokes. And I like jokes. I think that gives it another point. Um, yeah, three. I think three is probably what I'm going to give it. You have one more point to justify. Okay, one more point to justify. And it's okay if you say Kylie Minogue. Call me a fucking sap. Call me an idiot. You fucking sap, you idiot. Yeah, whenever Arizona is in a movie, I get a little bit of pride. Because I'm from there. So like, even though it's not has nothing to do with Arizona, but they say Arizona and it takes place in Arizona, I'm like, yeah, it's a little arizona -y. I feel like the only time Arizona as the setting for a Hollywood production has ever worked was Raising Arizona. Otherwise, Which was phenomenal, by the way. It's a fantastic movie. My point is, anytime Arizona is the setting for a movie, whether it's a movie like this or some big blockbuster or whatever, it never feels genuine. It feels like, for some reason, the writer was trying to be cute. Like fucking Twilight. Like, like yeah. we know it's fucking Stephanie Meyer whatever, was from Arizona. That's why she made Arizona one of the settings in a movie. And it never feels like genuine. It feels tacked on for it feels super fucking weird for some reason. I don't know why. I am not saying that because Arizona ever feels genuine in a movie. Because you're right, it does not. It just doesn't. It's a weird it feels like you're deliberately trying to be less mainstream by making it Arizona. Exactly. And it's just calling attentions to itself because nobody's exactly. from Arizona. Nobody does anything cool in Arizona. It's just exactly weird. But yeah. I am from Arizona, and that's why I'm like, hey. I'm from Arizona. I'll take a little shout out. I give this movie two points because uh, it's one point for each of the times in this movie where I said, oh, that was kind of clever. Um, do you recommend this movie? Okay. Oh, this is a complicated question. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> do I recommend this movie? I'm turning off my fucking microphone. <laughs> yes. No, come on. No. Why? Who do you hate that you would recommend this movie to? I recommend this movie... Because this is not a recommendation because it's a movie that I think everybody should watch. This is, I think I recommend this movie because one, 
it will definitely show you what a bad movie looks like. Two, it's... I think it's the downfall of basically everybody's career that's in it, and that's worth seeing. Mm. It's like, wow, this is not only a train wreck, which we all like to like look at, right? But also, it's kind of like a milestone. Biodome is like... I don't know. It's got a weird sort of vibe to it where it's kind of worth seeing just for the fact of how terrible it is. It's like, this is a thing that was made. People worked on it. It went to theaters and it's worth seeing the absolute garbage that some studio studio execs will sign off on. I recommend that you watch this on two conditions. One, you do it with a friend or a group. Or a lifeguard. Or, a lifeguard. or a medic standing by with a, a, a syringe full of adrenaline to wake you up after you've overdosed on alcohol. You do this with extreme, extreme amounts of satire. I'm only, only watch it because you know it's shitty and you want to see just how bad it can get. I don't recommend this movie at all. I don't, I don't think there's anything redeeming here enough to recommend. Uh, it's not a fun watch. Nope. Even with one of my best friends while drinking copious amounts of alcohol. It's not It's not fun, man. It's just not enjoyable at all. It's a cautionary tale for everybody who was involved. But, hey, three points. Uh, the other point that I was struggling to justify, here it is. It's better than the happening. That deserves a point. I don't think it deserves a point just because it's better than the happening. I will say this. The happening is a fucking terrible movie thinks it's a good movie. It's trying to take itself seriously. It fails on almost every level. But I had way more fun watching The Happening and riffing on it, which is one of the main tenets and points of this this series, than I, I did Biodome at all. So hmm. I would rather watch The Happening again, knowing I can make those jokes and pull material out of it to have a good time with it. There is so fucking little here with this movie just to just to mine jokes from. It is so offensively bad, sometimes just straight up offensive, that it's it's difficult to even make your own fun while watching it. There's just nothing here. Uh, DT, mm-hmm. I would like to revise my score. You're going to take away that number and make it a two, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Are we both stupid? Why do we do this? I don't know, man. Um... We're, we're going to watch worse movies than this probably at some point. Hey, we watched it so you don't have to. Exactly. We are doing the fucking world a service. We just watched Biodome and we've given you all the high points and most of the low points. And we did it while inflicting irreversible damage to our minds and bodies while doing it for your enjoyment. So please subscribe to the channel. Leave a like, leave a comment down below thanking us for our sacrifice for the entire world. We're fucking heroes. We're here. We're heroes. Dude, I'm watching the trailer on IMDb. And one of the selling points for this movie was Stephen Baldwin in bed with that brunette lady and like groping her while she's asleep. That's how this movie was marketed. Hey, DT. I'd like to revise my score.